dickhead. Hello, welcome back to another video. Um, today's one is going to be on sensory overload, which is something that I have um, only kind of recently figured out that I've struggled with. But it is something that I've massively, massively struggled with um, looking back at different situations in the past where um, I felt really overwhelmed and haven't really understood why. It's kind of made, made a lot more sense now. So I am going to cover the causes of sensory overload, the symptoms of it, um, the situations in which it can quite easily be triggered and also why people with ADHD seem to be kind of more susceptible than neurotypical people as to getting um, overloaded in kind of sen high sensory environments. So that's the plan. So essentially sensory overload seems to happen when your brain is getting too much information coming into it um, it's not able to kind of process and prior prioritize all of this information based on how important it thinks it is um, and how you should react to that situation at the time. It's in complete sort of overwhelm mode. Your brain having all of this information coming in that it doesn't really know what to do with kind of panics a little bit and tells your body to get the fuck out of there because its initial objective there, by the looks of things, is just to get you away from the overwhelming sensory input that it's under at that time. So this brings us on to the symptoms of sensory overload, and they actually reflect the symptoms of um, ADHD in general, to be honest. So the main ones that I could find that most people seem to suffer with when they report feeling sensory overload is like, irritability, restlessness, and inability to focus. For me personally though, uh, sensory overload seems to have a, a little bit of a different effect. Um, instead of me becoming kind of confrontational and um, irritable, um, I seem to just withdraw into myself. I'll stop talking, make much less eye contact, fidget. Um, I suppose maybe I would be just as likely to be confrontational, but I think it's because I'm on the defense, not on the offense, if that makes any sense at all. But that's how I feel it affects me. Uh, some of the situations where sensory overload is quite common are things like um, noisy environments, places with really bright lights and strong smells. Um, they can all set off a feeling of sensory overload in some people. For me personally, so I'm moving around all over the place on this chair. The worst one I think is loud, really busy environments like pubs and nightclubs are a bit of a struggle. There's just too much going on, um, especially in pubs because you're also expected to have conversations at the same time as being in like a really busy environment. Whereas in a nightclub, you can kind of just shut everything out and uh, pretend as if you're not feeling a bit overwhelmed in a pub you kind of have to just get on with it because you're supposed to be sociable uh, the second one which might just be um, sort of general overwhelm I suppose is um, confrontational conversations so when I'm in a confrontational conversation I feel as though my body and my brain so my emotions and my thoughts are taken up all of the bandwidth with um, anxious, overwhelmed thoughts that there's there's none left for me to think logically and come up with either a defense for what I'm trying to say or um, like a counter argument to whatever's going on. Um, so it feels like my senses are just taking in way too much irrelevant information, not being able to filter that out and then uh, I'm left with nothing but the dregs of shit to try and come up with a, an argument about. So looking at um, sensory overload with regards to like ADHD, very clever people, also known as like scientists, research scientists. Um, it doesn't look as though they actually know what the main 
sort of link between the two of them is why people with ADHD are more susceptible to feeling sensory overload from what I've read anyway. Um, but there are a couple of theories that I'm going to go through now and I can um, kind of relate to the theories definitely. So I feel as though they, um, they might be on the right track, those smart people. So the first suggested reason as to why there's such a close link between ADHD and uh, sensory overload is the um, inattention that comes along with ADHD. If you struggle to pay attention with what's going on around you, the information that your senses are picking up um, isn't good enough or you're not paying attention to the, the right ones, the relevant ones, you're not prioritising properly, information is likely to sneak up on you and kind of take you by surprise. So the example that they used to explain this was, um, so imagine you've woken up late for work, you've got two minutes before you have to leave the house, um, you throw on some clothes and leave, but then you realise that the shirt you've got on is one that you hate because it's got an itchy tag at the back and you've put your housemate's shoes on, stupid person, um, which are kind of too small and they pinch your feet. And what that means is that the discomfort that you're in has now created a sensory overload for you. Um, and that's all as a result of your inability to pay attention and focus at the time that you needed to because you're um, prioritizing the wrong information. Uh, the second reason I could find online was the troubles with kind of self-regulation that are part and parcel of ADHD and what's known as flexible thinking as well. And that's basically your ability to switch gears between tasks. They've also been suggested to play a role in the connection between um, sensory overload and ADHD. I'm not entirely sure why. The only thing I could think of for myself that would be relevant for that is that I do tend to kind of hyper-focus sometimes. So when they talk about like switching tasks, if I've, if, I don't know, I'm, um, I can't think of an example, but I'm busy with one task and I try to switch to the other one. Chances are I'll be super ultra focused on that first task and it would have taken me quite a while to get to there as well. And so switching to the other task would kind of, um, I don't know, really throw me off more than potentially someone without ADHD. So yeah, that's the only time that I could think that that would be kind of uh, relevant for myself, but who knows? If anyone else can think of a reason why that might um, have a really strong link, let me know. So yeah, that's um, sensory overload. What it is, when it might happen, and uh, why it might happen more frequently for people who have ADHD. At this point, you're probably thinking, that's all well and good, but what can I do about it, you fanny? Well, worry no more. I have got another video coming out soon, um, which is a few things that I've found really helpful for um, offsetting the effects of sensory overload. So yeah, that should be up very soon as well. And it'll also have just sort of the, not just my personal um, tips that have helped, but um, the most commonly fat, like recommended tips that I can find. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Ciao.